Over a decade ago, Sangyong arrived in the country with some horrendous looking utility vehicles and a claim that they were proudly Korean, even though they were powered by Mercedes Benz. Between then and now, they've been owned by Daewoo, General Motors, and the Shanghai Automotive Industry Corporation. In 2010, they were bought by Mahindra, which means that their financial troubles should be a thing of the past. And judging by the new Corando, so should those horrible cars they used to make. This is the fourth generation Corando, a car that is such a vast improvement over the previous version that to compare the two would be like comparing the Wright brothers to Boeing, they're worlds apart. And it's not all down to clever creases and crowd pleasing lines, this new car actually has a bit of character. Gone is the half Jeep, half Pajero boxiness, and it's been replaced by a rather nice looking front end, complete with a Bentley chrome plastic grille. The rear could almost be construed as stylish, and in profile, it looks like a big friendly giant. And unlike rivals Kia, Sangyong did it without hiring a single German. No, instead they got themselves a rather well-known Italian by the name of Giugaro to design the Corando. He's brought a bit of European sensibility to the thing. It's not the most eye-catching option in its class, but it can certainly hold its own. And there's not a lot of skimping either. Only the entry-level model makes do without the front fog lights and the roof rails, and the only extra on the top of the range is 18-inch alloys. Otherwise, what you see here is the Corando package. That sense of, oh good, they've made some improvements, is kept in check slightly once you step inside. There's a lot of hard plastic and a very unexciting execution, which makes me think, especially given the spec level, that if they tried just a bit harder with the design and some better materials, they could have made this interior really good, as opposed to what it is right now, which is pretty ordinary. So, a bit short on looks, but perfectly capable in other areas. The standard Corando spec includes decent storage spots, aircon and USB connection. Higher up on the model ladder you get Bluetooth and park distance control thrown in as well. The safety spec is decent across the board with ABS and dual front airbags. Only the top of the range Corando gets added side and curtain airbags. Space is SUV-like, with good versatility and some nice touches like reclining rear seats. So it's not the most exciting cabin in the world, but once you get going, you find that what it lacks in sophistication, it makes up for with real comfort and a sense of solidity. People are naturally skeptical about a little known brand like Sangyong, but from an engineering point of view, it at least feels on par with the other Koreans. It doesn't wobble or feel unstable, the steering isn't ridiculously over assisted, and the gears slot into place with a touch of precision. More so than the looks, the feel of this car is its most surprising feature. Engine choices include a 2-litre diesel and this 2-litre petrol with 110 kilowatts and 197 newton meters. The only gearbox choice in the petrol is a 6-speed manual. If you want an automatic Corando, you have to go for the diesel. The petrol motor does a good job. Like the interior, it falls more on the side of adequate rather than amazing. It does definitely feel the cold though and needs to warm up properly before being at its best. A good set of gear ratios do make easy work of in-town driving, although on the open road, sixth gear can feel a little too tall. If you're looking for an entry-level off-road machine, this particular Corando model isn't it. There's no clever traction system, it's just a straight up and down front wheel drive. In fact, there's only one real off-road option in the Corando lineup, and that's the top of the range diesel with all wheel drive and a diff lock. The other all wheel drive options in the range make do without the diff lock, and depending on which motor you go for, this car can tow up to two tons. Our test car is the second from the bottom Corando, and it goes for 270,000 Rand, including a three year 60,000 kilometer service plan.
which means the Sangyong is slightly cheaper than its similarly specced Korean competition. On the upside, opting for the Corando will probably mean a shorter waiting list, but as good as it looks and as well as it drives, it's still a few steps behind on what is arguably the most important part of the everyday drive, and that's a good interior. A decent engine coupled to a manual gearbox with well-stacked ratios and a chassis that's composed and comfortable equates to a well-sorted SUV package. The styling breaks new and welcome ground for the Sangyong brand, but there's still some work to be done on the inside.